Our ancestors probably got exposed to more extreme conditions than we do now. We evolved over millions of years as a species using the natural light in the outside. Outside, they weren't walking. What's going on, people? Welcome to 2020. I hope you're having a great start to the year. Five tips to really enhancing that in your diet. When you think about the ketogenic carnivore diet and the ancestral alignment there, these are awesome alignments as well. So number one is getting in your steps. And by that, I mean walking. Our ancestors walked oftentimes miles every single day. There wasn't a lot of time when they weren't outside and they weren't walking while they were hunting and gathering and moving around and migrating. In today's society, we just don't see people walking nearly as much as they they could. So the, the first step I would recommend is walking. And this does many things for your, your health and your body. One, I find if I lift heavy, especially my legs and my knees, there can be inflammation in my body after that lifting session. Walking helps to kind of move that fluid, to move the flow. So oftentimes they talk about cooling down on an exercise bike. And I find that it's really helpful to just cool down through a nice walk. The other thing too with walking is it aids in digestion. So after you have a big meal, you'll notice that a lot of people will go for a walk. When you go for a walk, and for me personally, if I have a dinner later in the evening that's larger and I actually go for a walk, I'll find that it'll just really help settle in the digestion and, and settle in the meal. So walking, it allows you to move your body, your gut, it allows that sort of digestion process to move around. There are systems in your body, such as the lymphatic system, where if you're not moving, you can't actually move the lymph fluid. It doesn't have a heart sort of within that system to pump and move the fluid. It's really dependent on your ability to move. So moving and having that walking is really a great sort of shift. The other thing I'll say about walking is I used to focus a lot more on intensity and training and, and lifting heavy consistently. And this year I really backed off that and started looking more at my recovery and tracking the metrics around that as far as heart rate variability and body temperature and resting heart rate. And what I found is that not always more is less when it comes to your exercise regimen and complementing your diet. So walking is a fantastic way to sort of get yourself in touch ancestrally with nature, with how you're built. Even if you walk on a treadmill inside, it's still really valuable but definitely think about getting steps in. Think about walking every single day. I think you're gonna find that this is one of the biggest things you can leverage in terms of optimizing your overall health and vitality heading into 2020. Number two is natural light. So 150 years ago, just barely 150 years ago, not even, Thomas Edison invented the first light bulb. Since then, we have made some amazing advances in technology to allow for us to have artificial light in a variety of environments to the point now where we have a lot of light emitting diodes, LEDs as our light source. The thing is, we evolved over millions of years as a species using the natural light in the outside. We did not see a lot of this light that we see today in our society. And getting natural light, as well as eliminating or, or dialing back the artificial light is really what the second tip is all about. It's really about how to respect the clock within your biology and to optimize yourself around the light. So when you think about that, the big one that comes to mind is probably ultraviolet B radiation contributing to vitamin D production. Keep in mind that the majority of vitamin D is likely only obtained through sun exposure on the skin meaning that you can't get it from your diet. Even if you think you're supplementing and you're getting it, you may not be getting it. You may not be getting the right forms. The other thing about sunlight in general is that there's ultraviolet A radiation, which helps the skin produce and release nitrites to expand and, and open up the cardiovascular system. And we see certain correlates in societies today where people who live closer to the equator who get out more in the sun tend to have better cardiovascular health than people who live further north or south and are in much less exposure to the direct sun. My personal experience is if you can live south of the 37th parallel, states like Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, the Southern kind of quarter of the United States, if you will, you're going to give yourself a chance to get ultraviolet B radiation even in the winter months. If you live north of that parallel, even if you go out in the sun, you're not gonna be producing vitamin D from your body. And there's so many things that vitamin D3 impacts in your body. Technically, it's not even a vitamin, it's considered what's called a pro-hormone, meaning the majority of your body has receptors within the cells. The majority of your cells have receptors for vitamin D3, and it acts as a pro-hormone, uh, a molecule component that essentially 
is a precursor in a, in a way to boost hormonal activity within the body, which is also why you'll see if you get good sunshine in a, in a balanced spectrum, you'll find that you'll sleep better. You'll, you'll feel better, your testosterone will go up, your energy will be stronger, your mood will be better. There is a lot of interesting science around this and we're still learning everything there is. But this tip really is about making sure you try to get outside midday, wherever you are, to get as much of the spectrum of sun as you can. And also think about getting outside earlier in the day to kind of get some of that sun to hit your eyes and to hit your super chiasmatic nucleus. All this is gonna help fuel you. From an ultraviolet B perspective, it helps with your vitamin D production and it really does play a major factor in so many different things from immune function to bone health. From a UVA perspective, it helps with your cardiovascular system. And then there's this just this whole thing about the, the light itself, how it affects your mood. Tip number three is to focus on environmental hermesis. And by that I mean cold and heat exposure. Our ancestors probably got exposed to more extreme conditions than we do now. We live in a society where everything is really comfortable and that's not a bad thing necessarily, but it does make our, ourselves soft. It does make our bodies less adept to handling stressors from the environment because we just don't trigger things. If you go and expose yourself to cold plunges, cold lakes, ice baths, cold showers, cold cryotherapy, all these things have been shown to really benefit people in terms of mood, in terms of flushing fluid through the body. Whenever your body gets into a cold state that's more extreme and it feels that, blood rushes back internally and it forces blood flow through vital organs and internal things and it pushes fluid through the body to kind of flush the system and allow yourself to recover better and to clear out toxins. There's so many benefits to cold therapy. I, I could go on. I will also say it really helps with sleep. So if you have issues with sleep or depression, there's been numerous studies on this that have shown that that's the benefits for cold exposure. And then on the other end of the spectrum is saunaing, heat exposure. Now in society, we probably didn't experience the level of heat that we see in some saunas, but we certainly have had some moments of stronger heat exposure. And so saunaing is a huge benefit for a lot of people. And it also helps with sweating out toxicity, toxic metals. There's some really great benefits from that respect as well. We know also all cause mortality is reduced when you, when you frequently sauna. And we've seen studies where that's been done in the Scandinavian countries to show that, hey, if you can get in the sauna three, four times a week, your mortality will go down by like 20, 30%, very substantial. So again, focus on just getting cold and heat exposure on a regular basis. Number four is sleep well. Sleep is the ultimate biohack. It's really the ultimate nootropic. It really benefits us in so many different ways in terms of allowing our bodies to recover, allowing us to mentally store and process the information that we're learning on a day-to-day -day basis. It is really the holy grail in terms of the best performance you're gonna get in longevity. Optimize it, spend some time and money learning about it. Think about the quality of your mattress, the quality of the environment you sleep in. Is it quiet? Is it dark? Is it cool? All these things help. And I write about this in my in one of my sleep guides that I'm releasing here, which you can learn about more by signing up on the link below in the description. But really to optimize your sleep, it's first learning what it is, what stages you want, tracking it, and then making these variable tweaks that I talk about in the guide that really make it that much better. But just imagine the amount of sleep you get and the quality of it and the efficiency all play a massive factor in the quality of your life and the quality of what you're going to do. Wouldn't you want to just optimize that and make that as best as possible? And my last point is meditating. So tip number five is to meditate. There are numerous studies out there that show the benefits of meditation from treating depression to limiting anxiety to improving the quality of sleep that you have to training and building your focused attention. So much information and so many studies and so much sort of evidence to support the benefits of meditating that I really think if you're gonna include five tips in here, you've got to add in meditation. Now, it doesn't have to be crazy. I've done meditation classes where we go for hours and we meet and we, we group meditate multiple times and that can be great to learn and accelerate your sort of learning curve of where you are in terms of understanding an effective method of meditation, but break it down. You can just dedicate 10 minutes a day in silence to sitting and focusing on either a mantra or your breath. And when I talk about focusing on your breath, which is what I do, I talk about this area right here above your nostrils or below your nostrils, above your upper lip, 
where you just kind of imagine closing your eyes and focusing in on that and then counting the breaths. Whenever you inhale, you count one. Whenever you exhale, you count two. Inhale three, exhale four. And you can do this up to a count of 10 and then start back at one again and keep doing this for five sets of 10. And then you can just breathe in and say into yourself in your head and out to yourself and meet all the while you're kind of consciously relaxing yourself. Now there's apps out there that can guide you with specific meditations. There's even programs and hardware you can put on your head like the Muse and Muse 2 that can help you identify and catch yourself when you're forgetting or when you're losing track of the breath or losing track of remembering that you were supposed to be meditating. But in general, just make time. That's the biggest hurdle for most people is showing up and doing that meditation. That was a lot. There's five tips there. I think they're going to be fantastic compliments to your diet and your lifestyle and your improvements heading into 2020. Let's do a quick recap and then we'll close out this video. Number one, steps in. Focus on getting your steps in. Make sure you're walking. A mile is fine. You don't have to go crazy. Maybe, you know, 20 minutes a day would be fantastic if you could do that. And maybe you can go for an hour every couple of days or twice a week. When you do those longer walks, it's also great fun. I like to listen to audiobooks while I walk or podcasts. Um, it, it just kind of helps me kind of just go and do my walking and, and knock something out at the same time. But also sometimes I just go for a walk and just kind of go without anything. Number two, get natural light. Focus on getting at least 20 minutes of UVB, UVA spectrum from the sun in the midday. So think between 11 a.m. and about 1 p.m., 2 p.m., that sort of window. Try to go out at lunch outside and expose more of your body. Open up your shirt, take off your jacket if you can. The infrared spectrum from the sun will actually heat your body up. So it could be 45 outside. If I go on my deck and I start working out and moving around, I can go out there with no shirt, no problem. As long as I'm moving around and the infrared light is hitting me, I feel that warm. Also think about looking at the sun or getting out, seeing the sky within an hour or two of sunrise so you can kind of wake yourself up and set your circadian rhythm. It really helps with your cycle there. And then think about things you can do to sort of hack your nighttime sleep to limit the amount of blue light that tells your body the sun is still up after sunset. Again, I talk about this in my sleep and light guides. So if you wanna learn more about that, go join the list here and we can talk about exactly how that works. Get yourself some cold showers. Think about getting into a sauna, get some heat and cold exposure. Sleep well, really dial in your environment. Again, my guide, learn, study, just invest in sleeping. It's such an important part of a third of your life or even more of your time spent, why not optimize it? Really invest in that. Learn how to do it well, optimize it, figure out what's causing insomnia. If you have issues with that, go seek medical or professional help. But I really highly recommend you, you consider optimizing and investing in that. And finally, meditate, okay? Meditation is gonna slow your mind down. It's gonna give you more control. Even though the mind is kind of like a wild animal, it's really hard to control. It's gonna give you more ability to sort of narrow in your focus and not go wild and really just kind of zoom in and hone in on your focus. So it gives you the ability to train your attention and really focus there. Hope that was helpful. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, make a comment. Let me know if you think I missed a really complimentary tip that is just a critical one for you. But I think these are the big five ones that I would nail down as far as if I was going to 2020 to complement my diet. And as always, let's get healthy and stay hungry and I will see you on the next one.